am I right? If God is lifted up, will you not draw near to him? And so tonight, we really want to do that with our song service, with our testimonies, with everything that we say and everything that we do. We want this Vespers to draw Christ up. So Chris, if you could just come up here. Chris uh, came to me, and he just texted me out of the blue. He's like, yo, I have a testimony to share. And so if you could just give him your heart and your ear and just hear him out and uh, see how he lifts up Christ. Here you go, Chris. Last year, September 8th, uh, about exactly one year ago, I got a text message from the girl who lived across the street from me, um, and she said, please tell me this is not true. So it was strange because she never really texted me at all, but I called her right away, and she said, please tell me this is not true. Um, Wayne got into an accident, and he got into an accident before, so it wasn't, you know, strange, but she says, no, no, you didn't hear, he died. So Wayne is my little brother, and he loves cars and he loves motorcycles. And he was, dri he was riding his motorcycle down the street in Hempstead, Long Island, and he got tail end by a car. He fell over the yellow line, and at the same time a truck was coming, and it ran over his chest. So right away, like, my life just paused. Everything just slowed down. Everything was moving in slow motion. And I was just confused. I was at work, and the one thing I thought about is who's going to tell my mom? Because I was the one who was just always trying to chase success and be big time, and, you know, and my brother was the one that was always just with my mom. He was close to my mom. Um, I remember when we was younger, I started a little business, and uh, we were shoveling snow. And I remember we got $300. I was so happy. My cousin and my little brother was working for me. And when I gave my little brother his money, I said, hey, you know you could buy a game. And he said, no, I'm going to give it to mommy. You know, so that was the relationship my brother had with my mom. And I was just very busy. I, you know, I had to be successful. So we headed out to Long Island, and uh, we had to go identify the body. And when I went into the dark room, I remember just looking at him laying on the table and saying to myself, wow, he looks just like me. And the reason why that was such a surprise to me was because for the last three to four years, I never hung out with my brother. Uh, I never saw my brother drive a car. And that's what he loved. He loved racing cars, you know, and I never seen my brother drive. And the last time I spoke to my brother, before that was on a call about a year before that and I just called him and I was crying because I said, I was crying hysterically because I said, please forgive me for not being a good big brother. And you know, I, I just got a better job at that time. So I was just like, I'm gonna take you out to the best restaurant. And I was just trying to fix everything in a day. And he said to me, he said, it's all right, don't worry about it. So when I saw him laying on the table, you know, it was a big turning point in my life because I looked to the left and I saw my sisters just crying. And I looked to the right and my mom was just crying. And I had to ask myself, at that point on, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna be a man? Are you gonna stop falling into these temptations you're falling into? Are you gonna finally spend time with your family? And right away, I just, I just started banging on the glass and I was saying, wake up, wake up. So they came in, they pulled me out of the room and they, they thought I was going crazy. I wasn't going crazy. I was just looking at my brother and I thought he was sleeping. You know, and we went back to the house and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me to walk down the block. So randomly, I just started walking down the block and when I got to the end of the block, it said, keep walking. And my little brother died in front of a church. So when I walked down the block, all of a sudden I was just crying hysterically. And it felt like my, my skin was lifting up. So I kept walking and I got in front of the church. Then at that point in my life, I knew all I wanted to do was be close to God. So I dropped down in front of my knees and I prayed for strength because 
I didn't want my sisters to see me cry. I felt like at that point in my life, I had to be the strong one for my family. And God gave me strength. I, lift, I lifted my head up and I looked to the sky and the first thing God said to me was, you need to be in church. And I started walking and it's, God said to me, you need to preach the word of God. And I was empowered at that moment because I was willing to do anything to see my brother again. So I finally started to tell my family members that I got a calling from God to preach. And the first person I told was my grandmother. And when I told my grandmother, she said to me, you can't preach. Pastors don't make any money. So I was, I was sad because I wasn't doing it for money. I just wanted to do whatever God wanted me to do so I can make it to heaven. And it was a long journey of me having a big time job, me trying to impress people to show people that I can make it, and then answering a call from God. When I came to Southwestern, God showed me many signs of why I'm supposed to be at the school. One of the number one things he showed me was there's so many different kids at the school who have a similar story to me. And I'm so grateful to go to this school because I know that this school is filled of God's people who one day are going to be in their professions spreading the gospel. And I just want to say thank you guys so much and all glory to God. And I'm so grateful to know Jesus Christ. Thank you.